In this video, we're gonna go over the three most common rod killing mistakes that you need to make sure to avoid to make sure you get the most life out of your fishing rods as possible. As we know, fishing rods are really our most valuable tool for catching fish. They're responsible for casting, for feeling the strikes, for pulling the fish in. So what we're gonna cover are the three mistakes that most anglers make that puts their rods in peril. And we're gonna go in level of importance. And make sure to stay to the end because the last one is a surprise that most people don't think about that breaks a shockingly large amount of rods. All right, so the first mistake and by far the, the biggest rod killer is, is called high sticking. And that's really when, when you put the rod, when an angler puts the rod in a position where the, the point of the rod is bent so much that it's now going towards the butt where you get past the 90 degree point that is just that's a rod killer the only time i've ever broken a rod i've broken one rod in my entire life and it was a very high-end rod which are actually the most prone to breaking i was just lifting up had a little small jack on it was only probably 10 12 inches and i was just lifting it up where i had the jack up like this rod was vertical the jack was hanging down it had just enough bend on it and it started thrashing and that, just that extra little motion got that rod in a compromising spot and it broke so the, the surprising fact is that the, the high-end rods are actually the ones that are that are mo more likely to break right you can get some of those wet noodle rods they'll never break right uh, the, the problem with those wet noodle rods is that you just can't feel anything and, and the reason why expensive rods can feel so great is because they're made from a high modulus material where where it's actually it's very lightweight and, and relatively stiff the feel is excellent but when you have great feel you're going to lose something and that something is just the inability to have the rod totally bend over itself so many anglers make the mistake of just buying a high-end rod thinking that it's going to be the the, the most uh, the most durable one out there and again in reality it's usually the opposite the high-end rods are, are amazing and that's now all I use because the, the ability to feel strikes I can like this is our a slot machine rod one of the prototypes and the, the feel of this is absolutely amazing you can feel even little pinfish just tapping at a lure and you can feel the difference of, of a pinfish tap and then a, a trout thump and get that hook set when needed that's crucial it's so important and so in my opinion it's well worth the, uh, the the little bit more risk on rod breakage because it really doesn't take much effort to not break a rod and all that requires is just to be mindful of when you're fighting a fish right if that fish is way out on the flat then you can hold the rod the rod up right and that in that line that rod at the point is not going to be pointing towards the rod as long as that rod isn't overextended it's not going to break it's really as simple as that but when the fish is now close to the boat if you have a big redfish on close to the boat and it starts diving under the boat the best way to break a rod is to leave the rod vertical like that in your hand what's going to happen that line's going to go down it's going to get that rod in a compromised position and game over all you have to do right the way to save your rod and not have it break ever I've again fished for many years now and have never broken a rod other than that one jack where I got careless is all you have to do when that redfish goes under the boat just drop the rod and even if it goes it can go way under the boat as long as your rod is dropped it's not going to break so high sticking by far is the number one rod killer and all it requires is just don't lift the rod don't have the rod more than 90 degrees towards the bend of the rod or towards the, the tension. And that tension doesn't matter what it is, right? You could be fighting a fish, and as long as that fish is out there and your rod is not more than 90 degrees towards that fish, it's great. If you're hung up on a log, right, and trying to break off, if you do this and that log's way over there, that rod's gonna break. If you need to break off, point the, point the rod to the, to the log, hold on the spool and just walk it back and your rod will never break that way. So now after selling rods for about three years now, we've seen a lot of, a lot of issues come in about, about people breaking the rods and, and probably I would say 90% of them are due to having rod in a compromised position. One extra thing, if you're fishing reefs, never ever leave a rod in a rod holder when that line is down below the boat. Because as soon, right, as soon as a fish strikes, it's gonna start fighting down below and now that rod is going to double over and be pointed towards that fish, rod's going to break. That's a very common uh, mistake that people make. And so just never put a rod in, in, a, in a high sticking situation and you're flat out not going to break a rod. So now for the second rod kill mistake is it, really about transportation. And, and as far as protecting the rod, the, the part that's most, most vulnerable is going to be this top end right here, right? And, and the, the faster the action of the rod, the further up in the blank the, the compromised spot is going to be. And what you'll see here, right, if you just kind of look at a deflection of a rod, you can basically see where it's going to be. It's, it's going to be that point where, where right there, right where it kind of transitions from the, a nice sturdy butt to, to having that, that first, that, that really sharpest bend of the rod. So in this case, it's going to be in between 
probably like that third and fourth guide from the tip. That's the section that we just want to make sure that we don't ever compromise in any way. Where if you're if you're going to be traveling with rods and you're having like the bed of a truck, which is not recommended. I, I personally do it, but I don't recommend it. But I just make sure to never have this section of the rod touching the truck. I, I'll uh, you know touching anything for that matter. I like to have it down here, right down here. This rod is going to be super sturdy. Up here, this is the spot of the the part of the rod that we just want to make sure to never chip to be extra careful with it. If you really want to be careful, get a, one, of those, one of those rod sleeves. If you're traveling, get a rod sleeve, put it over the rod, and that'll protect the rod from getting chipped. If you're using weights and you're, and you're going from one spot to the other, make sure that weight isn't hitting the blank, isn't up here on the, on the rod, because as, you, as you're traveling, that, that, that either weight or the lure is gonna be moving with the wind, and that can definitely compromise the rod. So whenever you're traveling, have your lures, your weights, have all that down at the butt section of the rod. This is gonna be the most powerful section of the rod. This is where the, it's basically not gonna break. Right? If you break this, then something significant happened. It's not from just having a minor chip. That's from uh, actually stepping on it or driving over with a truck or something. All right, so now for number three, and this has actually been surprisingly common, and, and it involves securing either the hook or the lure to the rod at the keeper. And I've had I've seen this come through multiple times, so I wanted to highlight it. And what's happening is, is you know, when securing the, the rod or the lure or the hook to the rod, it, you know, the, the, the exact amount of line isn't always gonna be there. And so in many cases, they'll be just, you know, maybe 10-ish or so inches, a little bit too short. And instead of undoing the bale and going down too far, securing it and then reeling up, the fisherman will just pull it down. And again, we talked about high sticking, right? If we pull straight down, if we pull straight down that rod, that is going to significantly bend the rod more so than if it has its tension coming from a long ways out. So please never ever pull down on the rod tip to secure your lure or your hook. That is putting that rod at the most compromised position. Instead, right, open up the bale whenever you need to secure it, go down too far, right, too far if anything, loop it around the hook keeper or put it through the hook keeper and then just hit the bale and now you're set. And lastly, same situation, right? Once that lure or hook is secured, like if you're storing your rod and you have some animals in the house, make sure to always just loosen the drag up so that even if an animal or, uh, or somebody actually walks, walks by and, and clips the line, now the drag is gonna go out before that rod is gonna, is gonna bend. If not, right, the, the weakest link is gonna break. And uh, if you have that rod super tight or the drag super tight and say, uh, say you have a, a big crazy dog like mine, 100 pound lab, and that comes through and hits that hits that line. Now that rod is bending, and and if it's a dog like Otis, that rod is probably going to break. And so far, I haven't lost a single rod to Otis. He has broken multiple reels, but I just make sure to always store my setups with drags very loose. Not only is that good for just protecting the rod, it's actually better for the reel drag as well. All right, so those are the three most common rod killing mistakes that I've seen. If, if there are any that I missed, please leave a comment down below. This is really meant just to be a start a conversation. And as I said before, this is just very important because again, rods are our most important tool in our toolkit for catching redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder, especially if we're using artificial lures. We need to invest more in the rods than anything else. I now spend you know, usually 2X on the rod compared to the reel. And since doing so, I have significantly increased my catch rate. Again, it's all about the rod. And so get a good rod, but protect it. When you get a good rod, know that we just can't high stick, protect that rod, and it'll be catching many fish for you for many years. If you're curious about this rod in particular, again, it's called the Slot Machine. This is a custom rod that we did. It has incredibly good feel. Also, it's specifically designed for lightweight reels in the 2,500 and 3,000 size so that these guides has just a perfect efficiency of flow where that line can shoot through those guides with minimal resistance, get longer casts, while feel more strikes. And so if you're looking for a high-end rod that has great performance, this is definitely it. And for Inside Club members, you actually get $100 off. You can actually pay for a whole year of your membership simply by getting this rod. So to learn more about this rod, go to fishstrong.com. You can see all the specs and all the fine details there. So thank you so much for your time to watching. Hope to see you again soon.